Okay, hey everybody, this is Brett from uh, Moonstream and we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Welcome to the uh, Crypto Mastery class. And those of you here and uh, see a bunch of familiar names, Todd, Doug, David, John, Perry, and Rick, welcome. And a couple of pages here, Ray Curtis, so Stephen Miller. If I missed anybody, apologies. And if you're watching on the uh, live stream replay, uh, please uh, make sure to like and subscribe to the video here if you wanna learn more about these. So let's dive into it and um, we uh, got started a little late, so the, are people going to keep joining as we go? All right, so the news today, I want to start out with Bitcoin halving. What is everybody waiting for now? First of all, I, you know this is a time where we want to watch and see what's happening. The news is seems to be always rosy and through rose-colored glasses at these kind of inflection points. And you know I've learned to uh, be a little bit leery of these uh, headlines, and so uh, people everyone expecting the having to cause Bitcoin to go much higher. And uh, that's not the case. That's not always the case. Uh, certainly after the having, we should see that. But since we were up seven months in a row, and I guess we can jump over for that just as a TLDR on all of this. Where did my charts go um, here? So on the uh, monthly chart here, so if I turn off all the studies, just as a reminder, we had, uh, we had seven monthly candles in a row, right? So that's that's unusual. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So really April should be a down month. And we're also quite far from these moving averages, the exponential moving averages. So um, how low will we go? Some people are saying 50,000. Um, I'm I'm seeing 60,000. Uh, a lot of things can happen here, guys. And so that's a TLDR on this. And of course, uh, markets are mostly red here today. I don't see anything really green up notable um, to bring up. So we did put out an alert to our M3 members and private clients in the last few days to lighten up and wait for this pullback to play out because, you know, look at all this news here, the Bitcoin having, you know, what's happening next. The Bitcoin's about to hit an event that will spark a huge rally. All of these headlines will, you know, we'll come back to these, but uh, keep in mind, 80% of media is placed. So who's uh, placing this media? People who want to sell into the uh, current uh, holders, right? So Bitcoin could surge to 120K on doomsday rally, all of these headlines. So, um, you know, we'll come back into this and unpack these individually, but I just wanted to give a quick rundown on, you know, be wary when you start seeing all of the, the hype cycle really kick into high gear. Uh, we saw that at the last top of the markets, everyone was waiting for 100,000, which never happened. So Anyway, uh, and here are liquidations, quite a few uh, liquidations on the long side, people that were going in, waiting, getting ahead of the having rally, the pre-having rally, which I don't think is going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen this month. And that's mostly because of uh, the, we've gone up seven months in a row. And so uh, we'll talk a little bit about the what caused the market sell-off, you know, the uh, international conflict, which is always the cause of immediate overreaction. And so anytime that you have that sort of bad news happening in the world, that's going to cause an overreaction. People will panic sell. And uh, and then um, let's see, do I have any? Uh, I think you guys are all familiar with what happened there, but the missiles launched by Iran uh, into uh, Israel, even though that was largely contained, a big scary event and the markets do not like uncertainty. So here's a TLDR as well. I think we do come at least down into the 60K range, and then we may get a bit of a bounce. But what we have to keep in mind and be watching for is, is are we in a new trend channel? And uh, we want to identify that as soon as possible. Now, it could be shallow like this, but we have to be open to the possibility that, you know, this could be a deeper trend channel. And does it go, can it go down to these 50K regions? So I will share a little bit in a minute why uh, we have a new indicator that might signal that we won't go that low. And uh, we'll talk about something else that could be a catalyst for higher prices. So good news is don't panic. Um, we've got a number of things around the horizon, but it might be a time to take some cards off the table and uh, and sort of get into cash in case. So we do head lower into buyback, lower in dollar cost average. So uh, let's get back to the news here. Uh, Bitcoin here is, I'll uh, just turn on my highlighter for us. Bitcoin is about to hit an event called the halving. Everyone knows this. And so they're suggesting may spark a big rally. This is on NPR. Um, look, the the more uh, relevant news is going to be coming up on the newswires, you know, like Crypto Panic is a good one. 
and uh, if I could spell it here, and uh, the NPRs of the world are going to get it late because it's they're being fed information by the whales, by people wanting to sell into that liquidity. So a little bit more related and uh, timely news. So uh, on here, but not really saying so much, it says Bitcoin in the stealth bear market. Uh, well, Peter Schiff is a perma bear against Bitcoin, so we can take that with a grain of salt. And so... um. Anyway, we'll come back to that, but uh, let's talk about this, about the halving. So those of you watching that aren't familiar with that, if you're watching a replay, the halving is every four years when the supply, available supply to be mined by the Bitcoin miners is cut in half programmatically. So a number of things happen. The demand uh, may stay the same, but the supply gets cut in half. So there's a lot of talk about a supply shock, a demand surge. As there is higher demand than supply, typically prices go up. So I think, however, we've seen a lot of front running in the this. So we're seeing more of a sell the news event. And some of you guys are uh, in our private coaching and M3 members. You guys have been talking about that. So certainly um, this is the uh, newbie news. So if you're watching this and this is new to you, please don't go run out and buy Bitcoin right now. I think uh, we do have lower prices to come and those will be better chances to get in lower. So, um, but certainly uh, become familiar with this. If you're not familiar with the having, I won't spend too much time on it. Lots of videos out there, but essentially half fewer Bitcoins get mined, the more valuable Bitcoin becomes. And this is, of course, one of our 10 factors that we've identified that could take Bitcoin to over 100,000 to higher targets, uh, 150,000, even 250 in this cycle. And so again, that would be one of the factors. Of course, we need to revise that worksheet. I'll do that tomorrow in our M3 Active Trader class. And if you're watching this, by the way, uh, for the first time too, and you like what you see and would like to find out more about these indicators we're gonna be teaching you guys, this is also a training class, and how to get more in-depth training like this, you can go to moonstream.io slash M3, where we do a deeper dive and you have live chat access to me, which we'll talk a little bit, a little bit later. So with that, so let me hop back over to this news and then we'll look at some charts. We'll look at the overall markets, what I'm seeing and price targets. So uh, let's uh, let's see here. The having again, uh, go ahead and Google that. It's uh, related to you know the miners programmatically. It becomes harder for them to mine. And essentially, here's here's another element that you should consider. Whereas currently miners are selling around $12 billion a year in Bitcoin and to cover the cost of their energy and their mining rigs, very expensive machines called ASICs, and always getting more expensive because the computing power is becoming more and more um, robust and requiring um, GMUs and uh, those set of the CPU, the GPUs rather, are becoming very much in demand because of AI and all of these other things that so they're using it for. So that's why costs are really going up. And so they're selling 12 billion a year. Now that uh, supply is gonna get cut in half as of around April 20th. It's not exact a time they have projections around April 19th, April 20th, based on the current mining um, cycle or the current, current mining rate of the miners. So when that happens, essentially there will be half as many Bitcoin to be mined, hence half as many that could be sold. And that's not an exact math. You know, those people still have to pay their energy and mining, but just less supply and higher demand, less supply, meaning cut in half, should see a surge in value at some point. Uh, markets have been overvalued and people have been buying ahead of this based on the ETF hype, also the ETFs trying to get ahead of the overall halving cycle. So what we're seeing is a lot of front running at even at even at the institutional level. We can see this at BlockWorks, um, BlackRock, Fidelity um, dipping a bit here uh, on the assets under management. Not too bad. Not too bad. Still at 17 billion and 9.9 .9 billion, depending on where you look. Um, you know, we haven't seen a tremendous amount of selling in the ETF. So the big question is, who's selling all this Bitcoin? It's hard to say. Um, you know, the U.S. government had said they had two billion dollars in Bitcoin to start selling, and it was assumed that would happen over the counter and the over the counter market. But uh, it's not really sure, not really clear, like who who's selling it because. Uh, the news is saying the whales are buying up 
Bitcoin. And so either way, either way, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. I've said it a hundred times. You guys know this. We are seeing quite a bit of selling pressure here. And uh, the longs that we're hoping for a breakout to the higher highs are getting liquidated in mass. We just showed that here on the liquidation chart here. So we can see this ETH uh, leading the liquidations, actually 3.91 million in the last hour. If we do a 12 hour and then we'll look at a 24 hour, Bitcoin leading at 48 million, over 31 million longs getting liquidated in the last 12 hours. Let's do a 12, a 24 hour look at this. So a total 230 million getting uh, wrecked essentially in uh, terms of liquidations on long Bitcoin. People leverage long on Bitcoin and ETH only 74 million. So it's interesting that in the last hour, uh, ETH has outpaced Bitcoin in liquidations uh, by just a little bit, a small margin. And of course, Solana, Doge, everything is being sold at programmatically when these things go down. So uh, anyway, that's interesting. And uh, if we have time, maybe we'll look at some open interest here. Part of the other reason, by the way, that uh, maybe this is a little too much for this class, we'll look at it tomorrow. But um, uh, what one of the other reasons that markets sold off so hard over the weekend, and I'll see if I can pull it up in the uh, signal chat from our M3 trader, is there was a massive amount of derivatives liquidations too. And those things act as targets. If they are as, uh, if there are lots of derivatives that uh, are going to be in the money at a certain price, the spot markets will tend to try to move around and make those, you know, cause the most pain. So here we go. Number four. These are the four reasons. Let's just talk about these uh, that I posted in our M3 Active Trader class uh, yesterday. And, uh, and this is from a, a great newsletter called Milk Road, by the way. International conflict, we all know about that. Iran attacked Israel with hundreds of drones, missiles. Um, that was a big catalyst. Um, but also, as we teach, and as we know, when prices push up and they're floating around inflection points at the high level and they get overbought, it's just only a matter of time until a news event uh, shoots that balloon out of the sky. And so certainly um, I could not have predicted uh, uh, Iran shooting missiles into the sky, but... Um, you know, it uh, if if it wasn't that, it could have been something else. We had a U.S. tax day sell off. A lot of people waiting for their crypto to rally to pay their taxes. How many of you were thinking that that I'll wait till this rally? Hopefully, it'll rally big on Monday, and I'll sell and I'll pay my taxes. Well, um, a lot of people were selling ahead of that and over the weekend to make sure they had enough money to pay their taxes, and of course, uh, make sure you're doing that. The Bitcoin having um, this uh, this sell off as well as usually bullish. I think it was a sell a news event because so many people got ahead of it. Here's a case in point. I call it the Uber indicator. Back in 2008, I had a, before there was Uber, had a taxi driver telling me his stock picks. And I thought to myself, something's not right here. And this is probably a bad sign of what's to come. Sure enough, the 2008 crash happened shortly thereafter. So similarly, when your Uber driver starts giving you his portfolio of crypto, you want to be really careful uh, unless they are in our class because they we have a few Uber drivers that uh, know better. At any rate, um, with that in mind, uh, what I was suggesting is I had a text from an Uber driver that drove me to the airport recently, and uh, and he texted me, said, where can I buy Bitcoin before April 19th? And so that would have been around the uh, halving time. And so I thought to myself, uh-oh, uh-oh. And so certainly the, the Uber effect, the Uber indicator is alive. Okay, so that right away, I was like, this is uh, probably not good. If everyone's thinking, how do I get in on this? This hype cycle is at a peak. And certainly the fear and greed index was unusually high. It was over 80, 80, 85. And uh, then the last thing here. So basically um, the uh, the Bitcoin halving has historically seen a short-term sell-off right before and after the halving. So um, we want to keep that in mind. And then, of course, what I was getting to and alluding to originally is the liquidations. $2 billion in futures options positions, sorry, futures positions, which are investors betting big, typically whales institutions betting on higher prices were liquidated over the weekend. $2 billion that had bet in these markets that prices would go higher. So wouldn't that put a huge bullseye on their back for whales, whoever they are, the powers that be, to push prices lower so that these futures positions would not be exercised in profit. Okay, so, you know, we want to be aware of that. A lot of this market is being driven, by the way, um, by derivatives, like it or not. This is Bitcoin is now a, a Wall Street product. 
through the uh, ETFs. And basically, we're going to see more of that. These ETFs like BlackRock and these other ones are going to be driving these markets along with the futures in a, in a lot of ways. So sorry, let me get this put away here. I'm going to get back to the news. Any questions on that? I'll just turn on the chat. Uh, we will take some questions here toward the end. Uh, trying to keep it uh, going quickly for you guys. So uh, let's see. We talked about the having here and... Um, Let's see, this you can go Google. I'm not going to talk about the having what that is any further and saying, will having spark a rally in Bitcoin? Well, it has, but again, preemptively. So you don't want to be the whole game of musical chairs. You don't want to be late to the party. A lot of this was push up on ETF hype and to get ahead of the having. Uh, we do have some more in-depth studies that we look at in tomorrow's M3 Active Trader class uh, based on that. But um, And then today, though, we will talk about how far down I think we'll go. So basically, uh, this uh, debate continues. Um, you know, we rallied up. We hit a new high, barely. The question is, was that a triple top, which would not be very good for the overall markets? Um, very unpredictable. A lot of factors, of course. And um, so we won't get too far into this. Well, the having cut energy consumption, um, you know, not necessarily because it's harder and harder to mine the Bitcoin as the halvings continue. It basically increases the hash rate and it, it takes more energy and time to buy a Bitcoin. Hence, the energy effect might be somewhat neutral. Of course, there are uh, innovative forward thinkers like Cynthia Loomis of uh, Montana, I believe it is, or Wyoming, I always get that wrong, who is using the methane from oil refinery to power Bitcoin rigs. So therefore, carbon neutral in terms of the uh, energy uh, argument. So we can sort of hopefully see more of that as we go and uh, more uh, politicians doing that in their states. So hopefully, uh, let's hope for that. Bitcoin having impact on the uh, altcoins here. Uh, they uh, So here's the thing, and I won't even read this yet. What's going to happen to the altcoins when the Bitcoin having happens? Uh, it'll be curious to see. I would imagine most of the money pours into Bitcoin because of that scarcity factor and uh, and maybe the altcoins, usually the altcoins rally later after Bitcoin has really run and is uh, sort of the Bitcoin dominance is peaked around 60 and starts to roll over when people sell and take profits. Typically, they don't want to go back into cash. They want to magnify their their gains. And so they'll go into stable coins uh, if the markets are going down. But a lot of times they'll go into altcoins. First, Ethereum, and we'll see Ethereum trailing behind Bitcoin most likely. And there's also that story storyline of the ETH ETF. Will that happen? Um, so we'll dev dive into that a little bit. I think it will happen, just not in as soon as people think. A lot of people have discounted that probability that was originally slated for around May. Um, BlackRock thinking they could get it done, but um, uh, there's uh, various angles on that we can talk about and we have talked about in prior classes, is ETH a security or not? Now that they've switched back to proof of uh, proof of stake or switched from proof of work to proof of stake, then are they really, are they still exempt from that uh, security laws? And now the SEC is coming around saying, hey, you know, you might not be uh, because of that uh, change they made, which I was talking about uh, six or eight months ago. So uh, what's gonna happen on the altcoins? We'll have to see, I think uh, certainly in the right sectors, we have AI as a hot sector. We have gaming that's kind of teeing up. And then, of course, DPIN, which we've been talking about in our M3 Active Trader class, decentralized physical infrastructure. So um, we are still early in a lot of these, and the narratives are still there. Markets just really needing a refresh. And by the way, I would add one more factor to the sell-off um, is that uh, the economic news came in a bit hot last week on the uh, CPI and lately the um, the comments from the Fed has been sort of signaling that uh, then the PPI came in um, and decent. And so we're looking at maybe they won't raise rates. Inflation appears to be sticky. So a lot of factors here, everybody. And so again, we'll be watching the charts to kind of see how markets are reacting to that. So we uh, can see this various factors, tokenomics, value proposition. Let's see, Cointelegraph, pretty pretty low level um, insights here. So we can just skim the headlines. Um, so yeah, certainly, I don't know, can this be right? The fear greed sentiment as of today, still 74. Uh, best buy opportunities are of course down in these red areas. That's why we were buying back in October of last year and November when the fear and greed index was at its lowest. And so uh, this... Um, 
You know, uh, this this I think probably is heading lower here. We're not quite in that range of where, you know, we still have this high greed factor because everyone thinks things are going to go higher and uh, in ahead of the halving. Let's see. Stocks crypto at the edge of significant correction. I think I already have this news pulled up, but let's take a look at it. And uh, let's see, uh, risk assets at a tipping point. Yeah, so so let's talk about that. Risk assets in general and the stock market could be um, ready for a correction if it looks like the Fed will not drop interest rates. And so they were pricing in, uh, let's see, Perry saying fear and greed only at 65 right now. So let's, that sounds about right. Yeah, the, uh, the articles here get pushed out. That was a screenshot. And so let's take a look at the real time. Fear or greed, this is a little bit more where we want to be. Yeah, last week, extreme greed, 80. When we see that, we want to be really careful and be uh, ready for a pullback, okay? And uh, certainly we saw that when we were hitting new all-time highs. It was above 80. It was, uh, um, I want to say, around 85. Did we hit 90? I can't remember. At any rate, we're now, we're still in this greed factor you know, probably we'd like to see this come down in this mid-range in the 50 or even lower. So um, uh, let's see, Perry says extreme liquidations. So yeah, you know, um, we the capitulation hasn't really ha happened yet. So we'll want to watch for these. Uh, and that's typically where the best buy opportunities are, where you see just a quick, fast drop where everyone is like, I'm out. And they're selling at any cost, thinking it's going to zero. So for our, for you know, not to give financial advice, but that's not the time to sell. Is after a big drop, typically there's a recovery bounce. But uh, we're going to dive into that a little bit more today. So and look at our indicators, which have been right and giving us great signals. And I'm going to share with you something today. Um, I'm going to show you where I think we dip to. But I also, as I put out to our members last night, a bit of a warning on where we could be going. I'm seeing a possibility that that was a market top for the near term. And, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. It's not what I want to say. It's just the signals we have that call the prior market cycle tops um, are what I trust. And it shows where the real whales and uh, elephants, as we say, are buying, um, follow the footsteps of the elephants. In this case, uh, the whales, the, 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 the waves or the, what is it? The, um, Swim waves are the whales, you know, those little fish that stick on the side of the whales. We want to be like them. That's what these indicators allow us to do. So stick around for that. Let's just talk about the news a little bit more. And uh, if you're just joining, um, uh, watch the replay on this. We did cover some of the markets uh, overall in the beginning. So uh, stock and cryptocurrency markets could be ahead of a crucial tipping point, this person says, and hitting for a significant price correction. Uh, that's what I was just alluding to, and we put out to our M3 members here yesterday. Uh, so this person saying they sold everything last night. Um, I, I I sold quite a bit yesterday just because I don't want to hold it all the way down and advise members to do the same, at least on a partial basis. So the reason saying persistent inflation, as I was just talking about, decreasing rate cuts and rising bond yield as the reasons behind this bearish outlook. Isn't it amazing how the sentiment can flip-flop so fast? And it just makes you almost make, makes you wonder what what's what are the real levers behind all this? And is this all planned out at a high level where the big money lies? It, it's impossible to know. And it's certainly a bit manic for us as retail investors. So as I said here, the primary trigger is the unexpected pers uh, persistent inflation. And I'll just make that black here. Bond, Rob, just, just mentioned that. And so um, we have to see, we have to wait and see. I've been speculating the idea of a double top like we saw in 2012, 2013. And I'm wondering, did, was that what we just saw at 74K? We barely got up in that area. But uh, either way, I think we're going to see a pullback and a bounce. And if you're underwater in your coins and looking for a way to maybe lessen, lighten the losses, uh, that would be, you know, either write it down a little bit away for the bounce. Uh, I do generally advise to sell some, take partial losses with the intent of buying back lower so you can dollar cost average and not get stuck in this analysis paralysis mode where you're in a panic mode or in denial. 
So uh, we'll, we'll look at the charts here in a moment. Bearish research note comes after Bitcoin's price fell over 9.33% and above 63.4 level as of 9.15. Yeah, um, uh, we won't go into that necessarily, but this 2023-2024 uh, market rally has been driven by expectations they would be cutting interest rates. And this narrative is being seriously challenged now. And so it's certainly possible that the recession still does come in, that inflation is not under control, uh, but we just don't know at this point. And so we'll, uh, in our tomorrow's class, we're going to look at that probability at the, the FedWatch tool, see what they're pricing in. They were pricing in a 90% probability that we would drop rates here, I think in May or certainly by June. Let's see, uh, now 99% of market participants expect the Fed to maintain interest rates at the current level uh, and, um, yeah, as I was just saying here, as, here, I just I must've seen that subconsciously. So they were saying 99%, uh, chance that, uh, they would, uh, they would, um, they were going to see expires 5.25550 so that they would maintain it. Um, you, you know, we'll have to see what happens there, but certainly there's a much lower chance that they're going to drop at this point. And that's the fear that we see. So RSIs, we'll look at this a little bit here too, although our indicators are a little bit uh, more present, I think, in predicting these. I do like, I use RSIs and others in conjunction with our indicators from Crypto Mastery, but uh, ours are built uh, based on some a little bit more advanced uh, data and algos, including our RSI Pro I'll tell you about. So uh, this article, Bitcoin could surge to 120K, all this, this uh, bullish, super hype, bullish, News now. This is by I think I think Mike Novogratz said this is quoted. So he's a smart guy, obviously. Uh, I thought I saw that was Novogratz, but uh, we'll get to it. It's good to keep in mind who the who the uh, source is. Uh, this article is written by somebody I'm not familiar with, but basically saying that. Um, geopolitical factors could see investors allocate funds, alternative assets such as Bitcoin. So um, kind of what happened is um, in the over the weekend. You know, when the U.S. markets were closed, generally in a conflict, and they saw a huge surge in gold buying, um, hypothesizing that Iran was buying gold, expecting sanctions on their economy when they uh, basically uh, declared war or at least retaliated against Israel. Um, and I won't get into sort of the, the dynamics of that. But basically, uh, when that happens... Uh, people will will go toward liquidity. And so um, I'm surprised there wasn't more of a push toward Bitcoin, honestly. Let's see. And so um, there, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole, you guys. But uh, here, Bitcoin has long been considered a possible hedge against geopolitical events was originally created in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis. So I think it's only a matter of time when we, and we're not there yet, but when mass adoption and early adoption is, you know, in in the curve of the parabolic curve past the early adopters and the innovators, early adopters, and then there's sort of the early majority. Um, we're not even there yet. Um, when we get into that peak of the curve, late majority, early majority, and the world is really adopting Bitcoin, um, assuming that happens, so we all believe that, then we probably will see more of a, a surge into these uh, assets like Bitcoin and and not uh, like not fiat assets. So uh, basically, it remains viable despite Bitcoin being highly correlated with traditional markets assets for several years. Yeah, so we're not there yet. And the argument uh, Bitcoin remains a viable doomsday asset in 2024. Um, you know, a bit of sensationalism there, of course, as its correlation to gold recently increased and investors continuing to diversify away from traditional financial assets. So, you know, just keep in mind, this is a process and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see, anything else? ETFs currently spearheading this doomsday rally. When was this written? What rally? Uh, let's see, always check the dates on this. Oh, let's see, uh, yeah, this... Okay, I don't know why they're calling this a rally here over the weekend. This is today's news. Today's the 16th. And the ETF currently spearheading this doomsday rally. What are you talking about? We're heading down. I mean, um, I guess they're referring to the run-up into prior to the weekend. Yeah, so crypto markets were shattered over the weekend. As we talked about, uh, and we already have, everyone's familiar with the Iran-Israel Iran conflict. So... 
Here's a TLDR. Inflows to ETFs have slowed in the past week. Data shows only one product saw inflows. That's BlackRock. So who's selling? You know, I just I do wonder if, um, you know, and of course, we are seeing a lot of leveraged liquidations are selling um, not by their own desire. We saw that in the last chart here that we pulled up here. So there's some of that highly leveraged long. Where was that chart? And here. Wait a minute. Sorry, guys. It's going to be on this chart here. The liquidations, if you got here late, I think uh, I got off the right page. Liquidations. Yeah, 24 hours liquidated, 226 million on the longs. People were betting heavy. So, you know, uh, stop losses, liquidation levels, that will certainly do it. And um, and then is the U.S. government selling over the counter? And even if they're selling over the counter, which is usually what they do, it doesn't affect on exchange prices directly. But uh, if the big buyers such as BlackRock are buying OTC, then there's less buy support on the exchanges. Now, this says data showing one product, BlackRock, saw inflows. Now, extensively, that would be on the exchange. And so we just don't really know. We don't really know. Some market observers say Bitcoin short-term price action will set the course for the broader crypto market. We've already talked about why we really should see, and it's a good thing to have April as a down month. We've been talking about that last month because of those seven upward months in a row. Uh, doesn't mean that has to happen, but certainly um, the buyers are exhausted. I think we do continue to sell off, and I'll show you where I think we'll go here in a minute. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, basically, the sell-off in the U.S. stock market affected global risk appetite late Monday, a reversing initial positivity. That was yesterday, of course. Market is hovering near the lows of March. Uh, look, all of this we can see, and we and it's, it's not a good thing, a bad thing. It's just a thing. But we had monthly – let me turn off some of this so you guys can kind of see, and we'll come back to it to add in some of the relevant data – but uh, at least in terms of the uh, candlesticks here on uh, monthly candles, again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months. This came up really fast. And all of this open air below this and the 21 month EMA, exponential moving average, typically a, a sign that it's things need to come back down and reset kind of closer to that 21 EMA. Certainly we saw that last market high up in this range and I've just coined a new kind of pattern called the ladder. When we see this fire ladder sort of going up like it's going up the side of a house at that vertical slope, typically that is unsustainable. You know, we'll see the same kind of pattern in the uh, when we finally get that uh, parabola style run up on the markets. But, um, you know, just a couple things we can also note here is that it's it's currently retesting. You know, we would expect to see this a retest of the prior high and see that. So if you ignore the other lines there, I'll just make this one black. And bear with me here. <clears throat> and to show you what I mean, I'll make that black and uh, we'll create a little bit uh, wider uh, line for you. So anyway, you see this, this was prior resistance on the monthly chart, 62 K. It did go up, up uh, above it a few times, but resistance, 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 resistance. Now breakouts usually happen on the third or fifth attempt, which we saw. So we kind of one, two, three, or we could kind of count this as one, two, and then three, the breakout retesting uh, retesting that prior high around that 62K in a monthly time frame, coming back and holding here. So that's the big question. Do we hold here? And then I do believe May goes higher, um, you know, um, based on demand and the halving. Otherwise, if it weren't the halving, I could see us come back down in this 50K range. And, uh, you know, it's not off the table, everybody. One of the things I also look look for and talk about is the midpoint of vector candles and so whether without getting into what those are there's various descriptions but i've known and seen this pattern for years as a day trader years and years ago typically these big candles that are the market makers basically repricing into a new zone some call them vector candles typically will retrace the midpoint all right. So if that were to happen, we could come down to that 52K range. And so, you know, when we zoom out on this, I guess my question to you is, are you willing and ready to hold back to 50,000? Some people think we go lower. I think that would be it unless we had some extreme news and we would still come up and hold that level. 
But uh, for those of you that are all in on the markets and, uh, you know, that would be a, let's do some percentages on that. If we were to come down to 50K, that would be another 17% or so, 17 to 20%. And, uh, you know, certainly doable, it certainly happens on these uh, market rallies and bull markets. Yes. And that would be a total reversal of, and this happens often too. We'll look at it on a weekly chart. We do have a chart on our uh, classes tomorrow that shows in depth what that looks like. But uh, hey guys, this is you know not the end of the world, even from up here to uh, come down from that cycle high around 72,000. If I could just choose the right chart pattern, the uh, tools here have been a little wonky lately. Let me get rid of that. And what I want is that percentage here, date and time. There we go. So let's do this one more time, you guys. Come down. If we come down to 50K, that's solely a 26% you know, uh, retracement from kind of the high, the monthly high. And if we did come down lower, you know, 30%, 40% still as possible, okay? So coming down to 46.5, we just have to kind of, this is why I'm suggesting and told our members over the weekend and yesterday to likely lighten the load and to be able to buy back lower. I would personally rather buy back higher if I'm wrong into strength and miss out on some of that than go down, be fully invested and go all the way down. Taking a partial loss, not the whole thing because we never know. You know what's going to work for you, but uh, that's a good habit to be in. Not financial advice, but uh, that's how I, I've emerged and always uh, evolved as a trader to do that. Uh, lagging into positions and lagging out of positions. All right, let's keep going and uh, let's see some comments coming in here. So Perry's saying maybe the countries are buying consistent, constantly at small scale, less than 100 Bitcoin per day. Well, if you've heard about uh, the hundred, Mr. 100 a day, somebody over in Asia is buying 100 Bitcoin a day. Uh, that's uh, nothing to sneeze at. Um, and, 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 you know, to be honest, dollar cost averaging over time typically gives the best, the best overall price. So if he's buying even now on the way down, at the end of the year, he'll have a pretty good uh, price cost basis. Let's see. Um, yeah, <clears throat> well, uh, maybe countries are buying constantly small, so not to light up as whales on analytics, certainly possible. But, um, you know, they're probably waiting. Um, and, and see, you know, there's always going to be some buy sell activity, but at some point we're going to see that uh, demand shock supply shock come into play. And, uh, we'll certainly, so here's my point on this. Be ready for this next bounce. You guys, uh, I did jump the gun by the way on Facebook and I, well, we had the, the new high and the dip. I said, that was the dip we've all been waiting for. We're going to 80 and, uh, and look, I was wrong. It was one of the rare times I was, I was wrong, but, uh, it does happen. Nobody's right. hundred percent of the time. New information equals new decision. So I revised my projection from 80K to 60K, uh, which um, isn't a lot in crypto and Bitcoin. So we'll see what happens. And we want to be ready, though, for the deeper dip. Why? Because, you know, you need that uh, that jump off the roof onto the trampoline effect, you, you know, to bounce off of it. Uh, you have got, got both sides. The bulls and the bears have to win once in a while. So right now it's the bears' turn. Can't have a tug of war without the bulls and the bears or else one side just falls over. There's no contest. Keep that in mind. And so right now the bears are in control. Perry says uh, almost all the major coins except Bitcoin BCH, Bitcoin Cash, plowed right through their bottom Bollinger Band. So uh, let's take a look at that. Our Bollinger Band now, um, yeah, using the third standard deviation that we use. And uh, interestingly, though, I did want to point that out on the monthly time frame. Another reason why the, uh, I hit the wrong one there, why it was topping out is on our modified Bollinger Band here, giving this red indicator. Now, I will say this, and we've noted before, on the monthly chart of Bitcoin, and um, let's see, I don't know if we can do it on our new indicator, but that Bollinger Band, the standard deviation works better at a four. Okay, so you can see that. So we didn't really get that cross up. We can see visually it got up above here. And uh, on a closing basis, it would light it up as red. So the only other time we've seen that on a monthly time frame. Look at that, you guys. Look at this Bollinger Band Pro we came out with. Market cycle tops when it get, gets above on the monthly time frame on the fourth standard deviation. This is our custom indicator, our RSI, I'm sorry, our order block 
or, or forgive me, we have all these new indicators, our Bollinger Bands, uh, our new Bollinger Bands indicator on the monthly time frame, Guys, we have another indicator to help us call the market cycle top. Look at this beautiful right on over in here in November of 2020. Oh, this was all the way back in 2013. Okay, so good to see that. And we visually can see it happened here back at the market cycle top in December of 17. So um, I might, uh, you know, we might recode that to a lighter shade of red when it breaks above. If you're new here and you don't know, we have it, we use a modified Bollinger Band to always as our take profit signal on the coins. And uh, the only time I go to the fourth standard deviation on that is going to be on this monthly time frame. So in that regard, we really, we obviously we're not there yet. So that's good news. If I put it back to our standard three on that, it gives us a little bit of an early warning, which we saw there. Usually that means prices are ex getting exhausted and likely to come back down. Um, so uh, stick around though. I've got some interesting things to show you on our new RSI Pro, uh, giving us some interesting signals that the market may have topped here short term. Okay, and uh, the other thing too that it does worry me, by the way, uh, worry me a bit is, and we want to be very careful, watch this, if we get a bearish engulfing candle this month, then we are more likely to come down to the 52 level, 52K level, maybe deeper. Um, probably that 52K level would hold at the midpoint of that uh Vector candle, okay? So I'm not gonna make projections here. Ideally though, we do not do not. So ideally we hold here and just go sideways this month around 62K. You know, we certainly could see a, a, a bottoming topping tail, sorry, bottoming tail to come down. But keep this in mind, mark my words, you know, we wanna see this red body inside of this green or else we may see a down month in May as well and drift down. And I'm just reporting what I'm seeing, everybody. Nobody wants to see this, but I do want you to protect yourself because protection or pres preservation of capital is paramount. Um, it, it's no fun to lose and give back profits that you may have had here. But um, the smart traders and investors know when to be emotionless, to take some money off the table so that we can buy back lower. We know we're in the bull run, market structure is higher. The time to be buying was last year, last January, when I was telling us to get in, when our ERI Pro signaled right there, this green arrow that we have, one of our custom indicators, accidental discovery. It's only fired four times in the history of Bitcoin, always at the market cycle bottom. So plus we had a big bullish engulfing candle on the monthly. So that's when I was pounding the table, get back in. And um, so similarly, as we come down in this range, wherever that dip starts to flip bullish, that will be the time to go all in. Uh, this is overextended. It needs to come back down for us to hit those higher numbers. I hope everyone understands that. Uh, we, if this were to go vertical and kept going higher, we would have had an early flame out, maybe, maybe have gotten to 100K and that would have been it. And so I'm still holding to that possibility, everybody, that we could see a double top. What would cause the most amount of pain and um, and uh, fear, et cetera? Uh, you know, we saw that back in 2013. It's hard to see back here, but, you know, we had sort of this double cycle where we pushed up and then it sold off. It doesn't look like much, uh, but this is, uh, this is all of this is possible. So if we come in here and we saw this peak and it retraced 76%, you know, that's typically what Bitcoin will do in a bear market. I want to put this on your radar, not to scare anybody, but please don't be sitting back, legs on the table, hands behind your head saying, counting your money uh, from this bull run uh, this is not going to be easy, but we do have we do have an edge and we do have these signals. And so what uh, what I would also call attention to, by the way, our new ERI Pro, which obviously we did not have back then. This is the new iteration on our early reversal indicator. And, and I want to touch on this. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll get back to the news in a minute. But what I what I have noticed, check this out, everybody. These buy blocks, when we see these big buy blocks, this is all the way back in 2011. We never went back below them, okay? So we, this buy block never went back below on a monthly time frame. I've also been looking at it on a weekly time frame. And um, 
you know, they used to say the hash ribbon indicator had that effect, but then it did breach down below it. Um, so, you know, it pays when in doubt, zoom out. Here again are our monthly ERIs. I told you that before. The only four times you've ever seen this green arrow on the monthly time frame is at the market cycle bottom or thereabouts. So we saw it there. We saw it there in 2015. We had one here in 2019. And then, of course, we got one here right at the beginning of January. So when's the time, best time to buy uh, there? I can't wait for the next bear market to then see the next bullish ERI on that time frame. Now, we haven't seen the ERI buy blocks uh, trigger here recently on a monthly time frame. On a weekly, which we can look at, uh, I just wanted to put that on your radar, everybody. Let me jump to a weekly. All this chart is, is designed for a monthly time frame. But uh, just to show you that, and also our ERI calling the market cycle tops here and here and here. And we're gonna look at this a little bit. Um, because I see it setting up here possibly where we are now, but just to walk down memory lane uh, a bit, let's see which, I want to make sure I'm on the right version of Bitcoin. Okay, so here we see those buy blocks. Forgive me, I want to just see one thing, guys. I haven't looked at this before. And um, okay, so it's still sort of interesting based on the longer term time frame with those buy blocks uh, and the, uh, the, uh, uh, at least with Binance. So see this big buy block back here. We, we, that wasn't that, isn't that cool that it, it perfectly sort of forecast the market cycle low right in there. The midpoint of this buy block, uh, is it, is it relevant? I don't know, but it's also the midpoint of that vector candle. And, and I've been, again, I've been seeing this for years. These midpoint of vector candles almost always retest. There are reasons for that I won't go into, and some of it are empirical, some are theory, and have to do with uh, market makers and uh, how they, uh, you know, they don't have to sort of take losses, they can carry it forward all the way to the future. I don't know. But we're not going to get into that. What I do want to get into is the fact that these green blocks have not been violated before on a monthly time frame. So um, we'll have to see, but if that were the case, that we did get to the midpoint of this one down here, it's resizing a little bit, but if that were the case, you know, then then this 52K level is still possible. You know, anywhere from 52K to 60K is on the cards, everybody. So do your math on your own account. Let me know, you know, if you want to hold through, some of you have been holding all the way through this bear market. So uh, this, is not, this is nothing to you guys. Some of you are a little bit more uh, nervous about your holdings. Some of my private clients have quite a bit in the market and uh, this is a bit nerve wracking. I get it, I get it. So let's see. Um, I wanna talk about something else here. Let's see, I wanna, are we good there on that? Let's come back and see on a daily time frame. Let me get to some questions here. Fear and greed is at 65, right? So we talked about that, did come down a bit. Maybe the country are buying, we talked about that. And um, let's see, now you said on the Bollinger Band third, a lot of major coins except uh, plowed right through them. So on the daily time frame, let's turn on that Bollinger Band Pro and see what happened there. Uh, the altcoins, a lot of them getting really beat up here. So uh, we could see, let's see where uh, ETH is up in this range too. A lot of them did go below the lower Bollinger Band. That is a good buy signal, especially especially if we get the vertical green on those. So one of our indicators, uh, we see these vertical red lines. Those are sell signals when it closes above the upper Bollinger Band. And I'll tell you how to get a, a hand, your hands on these new pro indicators, uh, which are excellent for taking profits. People ask me all the time, Brett, when should I take profits? One of our simple signals that we've created is a modified Bollinger Band. The, uh, the normal one doesn't work for crypto. You have to modify it. And if you can see here, when these vertical red lines happen, it either stops going up, right? Or it sells off. Great place to take 50% profits and wait to buy back lower. So we saw one here, pulled back, and here pulled back. Now on the opposite side, which we don't get very often, is the buy side usually. Now this was kind of either went, what it really no, it signifies is that it will revert to the mean and then usually go to the opposite extreme. So in a sideways market, it's less relevant. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a headache if I keep going left and getting off topic here. So what I do wanna say though, is that uh, to your comment on the uh, Bollinger Bands dipping down through, those would be, you can catch some nice bounce plays on those. 
right? So here's a case a case in point. Now, this is dangerous. This is a little bit more for the active traders, but I know many of you are in our active trader class. And again, if you're joining late, you can find out more about that at moonstream.io slash m3 where you can get daily access to me and the signal chat. And you can also get access to our indicators for free. You can see we've got a very active community, private live chat room 24 seven. You guys, I'm always in here, whether I'm taking a walk on my mobile, somewhere on my iPad, uh, traveling, I'm always in here answering your questions. We've got sm very smart traders in here as well. And uh, also the live weekly classes, kind of like this. If you like this class, you're going to love the M3 class tomorrow. We dive deeper into things like the dollar index that uh, trades inversely to crypto, things like total market cap. Very interesting study we're going to co cover tomorrow. Talk about tomorrow, what I'm seeing and why I'm a bit nervous on this market. Excuse me. And then there's a members area where you have other resources in here, the training vault, the class recordings. If you can't make them live, bonus tools, resources like the portfolio tracker, our DCA uh, order template where you can leg into markets and pictures of these here, like uh, high probability candlestick patterns, tools to give you the edge, trading patterns that play out. Guys, we saw head and shoulders patterns. How many of you saw that? A couple of those um, coins, head and shoulders patterns played out perfectly. And I'm a little, I'm a little concerned on a couple of these coins have a head and shoulders again. That's how I also call the 2021 market, uh, big head and shoulders at the top. And as you can see here, I, I do actually trade quite a bit. And uh, anyway, so you can learn more about that, learn review, uh, read reviews from people and existing clients here. And you can see some people there down at the bottom. Okay. A quick little commercial there for our M3 Active Trader class that many of you are already in. But if you're watching the replay, a uh, great community to, to join. All right. Um, what are we going to talk about here? Uh, I want to talk about two things and um, what I, we were discussing here so that we're on the same page. The pro indicator that when it got below this Bollinger Band as a swing buy signal, anybody buy this on Phantom Coin? down below that. Now in the moment, it's terrifying. And in the moment without this, you would say, oh my God, uh, if, the, the, if these two red candles were lined up, you would be most likely hitting the sell button and then be upset that it bounced all the way back up here. Okay. So the beautiful thing is if you're in Phantom Coin, great project and holding all the way down. We have, Now we... It's a deep breath. This was a really tough one. Okay. We had early reversal indicator here pushing up above its 21 day EMA. Now, what we got wrong is it was hitting the upper edge of that trend channel, although ETF mania hype cycle told us we could go higher here. And our other signal, the TSI, was green. And then what happened as we started to reject at the upper edge of that trend channel? So, so what I'm going to be doing it for everybody is in the future, creating a course around trend channel trading where we, we don't second guess this. And no matter what the hype cycle is telling us at these upper boundaries, we're selling and we're not concerned about FOMOing this upper uh, overbought scenarios here because invariably this will revert and where we want to be buying always and is down here at the bottom of the trend channel and with our signals like the rocket. I mean, look at this perfect entry back here. We were looking at this buying phantom back in this range. And, uh, you know, we just got greedy, got greedy. Look at this breaking out four candles in a row. In retrospect, uh, you know, that didn't play out. And then we saw this here, four candles in a row. We had bullish signals, but it was at the upper. This should be in the gating factor. And then, of course, out of nowhere, all of this bad news, <clears throat> dumping, dumping, dumping. Okay, look, we're always learning, you guys. And so what we'll be waiting for is, you know, not buying here. Although, let me finish that point. If you were an active trader and you saw the price down below the lower edge of this Bollinger Band, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to modify it a bit so you guys can see. I'll make this line thicker. So you guys can see this because I know this is brand new for everybody. And I'll turn off the uh, EMAs, the exponential moving averages. So all we're looking at is that Bollinger Band indicator. And I'll turn off that midline, that blue line. We don't need that. That's kind of the basis line. But for here, just looking at this right here below the Bollinger Band. Now, if it were above the Bollinger Band, 
it would be a take profit signal. Because it was below, this was a buy signal. Or if you were short, cover the short. Well, you know, um, easy in hindsight, but you know, when you're an active trader, these are things I'd be looking for. And I would be, when I was shorting, I would be shorting and covering exactly at these times. Anytime is outside of that lower Bollinger Band or the, uh, the um, uh, what is it called? The, the, the value, um, I'm drawing a blank here, the VWAP. So at any rate, if you had bought down here, you'd had a nice 27% bounce intraday. There's some great profits to be made if you're day trading. And the beautiful thing is our indicators work in all time frames if you're a day trader, swing trader. So anyway, just pointing that out for most of you, that's not for you. I just wanted to point that out. And if uh, you ever were seeing a close below that lower Bollinger Band, that's an, a great time to be buying. And because they do almost always revert, at least go sideways and then go higher. Okay, so I'll back to this example, and I'm not promoting Phantom Coin necessarily. Um, I do like the project. And uh, what I see here is we're over, we're a bit oversold, but I would not be buying until we get an ERI and TSI, or if we get on our RSI Pro, a green dot. So this is one of our new pro indicators too, because look at this, you guys, how easy is, if you just wait for the signals to align, green arrow here, and I didn't talk about our buy block indicator yet, so I know many of you have seen this, uh, many of you have not. These blocks, these green blocks, are where buy orders are on the exchanges. Now it is exchange specific, so this is for the Gemini exchange, and you know, not a bad idea to check it on other bigger exchanges like Coinbase. But a lot of times they overlap. So imagine if we just go back. Let's do this, uh, and I'm really here to give you guys an edge. This is both a training for these indicators and unpacking the news, and really helping you become better traders. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, where is, oh, I know what, I'm in the wrong place. Let's look at the replay. So we're going to go back in time, everybody. Let's do this together. And so basically, let's go back here. What was I trying to do? Um, uh, yes, I did. Let me do that over. Let me do that over. And... Uh, yes, sorry, I want to go a little bit far. This is, this is uh, not to play armchair quarterback. This is for your, your learning. Um, yeah, we're going to go all the way back here. Okay, so this is all the way back to January of 2024. Earlier this year, you know, we were coming down. We had this big sell-off. You know, we had drawn this uh, trend channel. Now, forget that it's phantom coin. This is just to show you how to trade these charts in all of these coins. Whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, doesn't matter. So we started to see a couple of things. We were oversold. Uh, we were, um, in terms of this indicator here, it's kind of like a stochastics, but it's our modified one called a trend strength indicator. Uh, it was starting to turn up a little bit. So that's interesting, but not a buy signal. And what I'm going to do, though, is uh, just kind of advance this one at a time. We are at the lower edge of our trend channel, as we can see here, and uh, which we had already drawn. And so um, let's see, if I push this button, it's going to play it. So I'll hit play and I'll pause. And then, we, then right there, you see that we had uh, a come down below the trend channel, but then there was a buy block. And this signifies that there was a lot of buy orders on the exchange. These have been amazing in telling us when these uh, inflection points were going to be. But we also had our ERI, our early reversal indicator. Now, this has a number of factors. Anyone that wants to know what it's really about, we put a green arrow on there, which is very simplistic, but there's a, uh, it was an accidental discovery where we found that when something moves from one level to another within three time periods, highly likely to continue all the way up. And uh, so we also added in a, a TSI. And um, what we've just released is this RSI Pro. So these green circles are market bottoms and these red circles are market tops. Look how good these are, guys, right there. Boom, call this top there, boom, right here, along with the ERI. If you've ever wanted an edge in these markets, these are it. And uh, you can find out more about these at cryptomastery.org. The links will be down in the description, but let's keep going here. So I'm gonna hit play and just to give you an idea. So now this is going higher, going higher, dip down a little bit. We still have those buy blocks down below. And right there, we got a rocket. Now, a rocket is one of our signals that we've coded in, and it's a pattern I've noticed for years. 
that you wouldn't see it otherwise. It's it's it, it bounces off of the 21 period EMA. You don't need to know any of this, but if you see this little rocket here, very often, you see how they rockets up after that? There's one right here. They don't happen very often. But um, in hindsight, this was an amazing time to be buying and probably I should be hitting this little buy capsule back here uh, to show you. You can use this for your trading as well. So let's say I'll just buy some here, even though we're late. I'll buy two there because we got a little, little bit late. I'll hit play and then we continue higher. Now we're a little bit overbought here uh, in this trend uh, TSI, this red signal, but not below 80 and we're still in our trend channel. However, there's some sell pressure above, not enough to make me sell. And sure enough, we're going to go higher here. We have another rocket off after another buy block. See that? So there's a buy block. We had another rocket. And then in that case, I should hit the buy button again. I'll do it late. We're going to be late on these until we get a sell signal. I'm not doing anything. Now, there, we've got a sell signal right there above that Bollinger Band. And I don't know what comes next, but I'm going to sell two of these. And we still have one position open, so I don't always sell all of it. And let me bring this down. Hopefully you guys are following along here and it should pull back. It did pull back and then we had a buy block. It went so fast I missed it. I'm going to buy one. Well, I won't buy in the upper trend channel. I might give it uh, one more bar. We have a new buy block. Uh, and so I'm just looking for sell signals. I'm not even looking at the chart here. Although, yeah, we're starting to see our TSI go red. Go red. So what I'll do is I'll sell one there. Now, guys, this is more for active traders. You don't have to be this active. But now here we've got this thing breaking out of the trend channel and letting it run. Sometimes you want to let your profits run. And where could it go? Up to this buy sell block up here. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we get up to it. And we did kind of have a sell signal in the TSI there. But we've got buy blocks here. We had a new ERI happen. I, I should have bought more on this. We'll buy one more there. Even though we're buying late, you could do much better if you're doing this on the right timing. Uh, but then we had sell <laughs> sell ERI. Problem is I'm trying to go one at a time and I should have been doing that slower, you guys. But anyway, even with all those mistakes, we still had a 75% win rate, <laughs> even though I did that very poorly. If you were better at it and we're doing it right when the signals happened, you would have done much better. Cool. Everyone get that? So um, with that, uh, I want to do a couple things. Um, and again, you can find out more about these indicators at Crypto Mastery dot org and then those would be the basic indicators and then if you wanted the uh, pro indicators uh that uh, will be optioned there's an option to upgrade to those from there many of you guys already have those and in the chat if you're already using them let maybe drop a link in there what if you like them so far the pro indicators are at um moonstream.io slash mastery pro there's a great lifetime offer there you can find out more about uh, or a great offer for a year. So we're, we're special for the beginning of this, these indicators, 497 for the year, 1497 for lifetime. That's at moonstream.io slash mastery pro. Um, guys, if you really want an edge and you really want to nail this market, so you need these. I've been trading 25 years. These are the best I've ever used. Uh, we will get back to the trade checklist, by the way. Some of you may have seen this. Some of you may not. Um, if you'd like a free copy of this, you can go over to uh, moonstream.io free checklist or just at our main website. And I'll show you how to use that here in a moment. And if anybody has any coins you would like me to, to do an analysis on using our trade success checklist, let me know. And um, I'll do that. Uh, I see some more questions here. I will get to those. I was in a, on a bit of a roll. Here's our website, moonstream.io. Down at the bottom, you can find out more about these here and what we offer, the indicators, our M3 Active Trader, some of the other services. But um, there's, the free, there's some free uh, information down below. Our newsletter, definitely sign up for that. And that's every Monday. Uh, these trainings, you can sign up to be notified and be on live here. And then the Trader Success Checklist, which you can get uh, by clicking on that link and some other reports that we've written. So, or I'm just going to pull it up here. I believe it's free checklist. There you go. Just to bypass that whole thing. And, uh, and there you go. So basically, this is an interactive PDF you can download. And let's see, uh, Perry says, yeah, cool. We'll do more of that and, and remind me tomorrow and we'll do that in M3, Perry.
So what is this trade success checklist? This is where you can look at a chart and say that is the, are these things available on the chart? On that last example, where we had that green arrow, the early reversal indicator, well, if you see one of those, you can click that checkbox and down below, it starts building your score, your trade success score. There's nothing like this anywhere that I know of. We built this for our members and uh, we're giving this away for you free, uh, regardless if you use our indicators or not. Of course, it works better with our indicators, but that's up to you. And so let's see, we have then, um, we also have a TSI that goes green, right? So if I'll jump back to that example, for a moment and um, let's uh, close off the this uh, study that we just did and I'll just look at those two things. So if you'll remember, we went all the way back here and uh, we saw this ERI green, we saw our TSI go green here, right? Trend strength indicator. Now, by the way, these might look simplistic. Some of you might use so-called fancy indicators and Elliott waves and uh, Fibonacci circles and, and Gantt, all of that stuff. Uh, fine. Um, but you don't need that. And, and um, I, I think it's confusing. I don't use that. I prefer simplicity. But if you're saying to yourself, these are too simple looking, our partner that created them as a 25 year trader, professional trader, used to trade uh, big money back in the 2007, eight range. Uh, and we all know what happened in 2008 the crash and uh, the firm, the prop firm lost a lot of money and he, he vowed never let that happen again. So he created these indicators over the last 20, 12, 14 years. Um, and we've refined and made better ones. Uh, he's a quant engineer, programmer, and, and a trader. He trades himself. He builds advanced automated trading algos on the S&P and the futures. So these are not toys, everybody. We've made them simple yet powerful. And whatever you're using, these will win hands down, I believe, and work great. And, and even as a confirmation indicator, you know, if you like your uh, MACDs and RSIs and all that, but here's the point, uh, that's what everyone uses. And if you want an edge, you need something a little bit better. And that's what we have here. So right here, uh, this green arrow, early reversal indicator, uh, I had, the real indicator is an oscillator. It's just not very fun to look at. So we have coded this version to just throw the arrows on here. There's a Keltner channel built in there and has another couple of quant things in there. So just know uh, this is not just an arrow system. These are very good. ERI and especially when it fires with this TSI. So back here to the checklist, uh, I already have this open. So we would go, all right, is there a TSI? Yes, there is. Well, what's our trend, our trade success score now? Well, you guessed it. It's two out of 21. Now, often that's enough for me to start buying that trade. I don't go all in. And what we teach our traders is to buy a little but then have some powder dry to add to that because the bigger the trade success score, the higher the probability. Hedge fund managers are really risk managers and they trade probabilities. And this allows us to trade alongside those with the similar uh, te technology and technique. So then we have another one called the signal line. I'm not even gonna show that one yet um, or the trend. Um, you know, we have those as well. We have our new pro indicators. I haven't added some of them yet. So for argument's sake, let me go over here. Uh, what I would say is if this RSI pro had given a green circle, another check. This is so new. We haven't added it to the trade success checklist. I need to do that uh, because look how cool that is. And uh, actually we're, we're looking right down here. So we had ERI, the RSI triggered it first. Look at that and the buy block. You know, so once we add in the, let's say we had the buy blocks and the RSI circle, our trade score would be four right now. And, uh, and so we pushed up a bit. Uh, we had a little bit of a reversal there, but the TSI was still green. So if we held and we held, and then we get to our rocket indicator, which we love. Let me show you this. And if you'd like, if anyone likes, I'll, I'll in, describe what it means. But um, the rocket... I've got too many things open, you guys, is this pattern. And I'll we'll go back and look at some of these other signals, traditional setups. But here is this rocket. I'll describe this. A rocket is a green candle with a real, a green real body. Okay, that's the real body. The tail uh, resting at support. Now, the support is usually a 21 or a 50 period 
exponential moving average or a horizontal trend line. That's less effective, I found, but we want to see it sitting right on that. And uh, as the support or the launch pad, because we call it rocket on the launch pad, and with a price wick below, which would signify the fuse. If you've ever let off a bottle rocket, guys know what I mean. You put the bottle, put the bottle rocket in the bottle, and it's kind of resting on the rim. You got a fuse, you light the fuse, you get away from it. And what happens? It shoots up in the sky. And the bigger, the more amount of that sulfur, the more fuel, right? It goes higher. Is that right? You get the little bottle rockets, and then you got those big ones that shoot way up in the sky. So the bigger the fuel, the bigger the, the candle body, the higher it goes. Look at this one, right on the launch pad, light the fuse, shoot up in the sky, and then it usually overextends and comes back down. That's when we'd be looking for getting extended over that modified Bollinger Band that we use, okay? And uh, so as, as I just described here, that's called rocket on the launch pad. Now these are not that common. So when we see them, we definitely want to check that off. So right here we had uh, the, uh, it's just that same chart, phantom coin, boom, boom, boom. We had a rocket and we had another one. I know it might be hard to see. Let me show you this, you guys. Let me turn on that exponential moving average. And uh, there's two of them. And so this rocket was a smaller one and it was sitting on the 21 day EMA. But if you zoom out, you can see it. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. And I've been noticing this pattern for years and then we coded it into an indicator. You see that? Isn't that awesome? Sitting right in the launch pad, you go light the fuse, shoots up in the sky, it runs out of fuel, kind of comes down. And uh, then we have this rocket. Now this one's a little bit uh, different because it's not sitting right on, um, right on the launch pad of the EMA, but uh, that fuse is there. And if you look left, here we can see that was kind of at support resistance flipped as support okay and then what happened there we shot up again into the sky i need to get this uh, thing on the arrow come on now there and then when it moved shot up a little bit higher it came sideways 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 ran out of fuel again then we had another rocket now what's the difference on this one you guys anybody i what well bigger real body, more fuel, sitting right on that 21 day EMA. Now these work in all time frames as well. Another rocket signal and it shot way up in the sky. Let's check our other indicators. Yeah, so, you know, this was a great signal. This was going higher. Did it work? You tell me. Where would you have sold? I would have taken some profits above this Bollinger Band, but not all of it. Always keep a moon bag. And then we have this sh signaling the uh, this closing above the uh, the Bollinger Band, great, great take profit signal. Okay. Because why you can always buy back lower. And, uh, and guys, you see that? Remember how we told, I've given you some secrets. I usually reserve for our M3 traders, but we're on a roll here. You see that, that midpoint of the vector candle, look what happened. Came right down and retested it. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. All right. So anyway, um, that's why we have an edge with these indicators. And I know we just sort of skipped off the news here, but I wanted to share that with you. And uh, so, and then what did we have here? We had our first sell signal right up in here, the bearish ERI and um, upper edge of the trend channel. So typically, you know, we started to see this rolling over, but um, anyway, you get the point. Now on this uh, trade success, uh, you can also use other things like uh, above the uh, support line, above moving averages, you know, um, breaking above support trend lines. So even if you don't have the indicators yet, you should go ahead and download this. Um, I have a, something called a volatility index. I, I'm not gonna really talk about it today. Uh, we might, but um, all of these kind of increase the trade success score or lower it because there are bearish versions also. And uh, so another thing I like to look at on the shorter timeframes, uh, we have something called a uh, all time frame radar when it's all one color you know let's take a look at the radar here because we haven't looked at that and might need to add that on here so these are by the way if you are on trading view this is easy to add these we turn them on once you sign up and uh, just click on that to add those and you'll get access to that and as well as the base indicators like average true range so currently we have a radar mostly red on the three month time frame we're still bullish so this tells us I probably should be using Bitcoin here, but it tells us that the overall trend is still bullish on the quarterly timeframe. 
But on the monthly time frame and the weekly and the daily, it's bearish. This is another sign that we pull back this month. If they're all red, and specifically what I'm looking at and showing you, because we created this down in the lower right-hand corner. I'll turn off the volume so you can see it. See this down here? Uh, if this is all red, it's also a sell signal. We created this radar back in the last bull market. Uh, the candles have changed colors, by the way, because of this ATR. I'll, I'll talk about the dynamic average true range in a moment. Here, I'll turn it off back. So we had done a promotion end of the year, and um, and then the markets promptly sell, sold off. And so we went to Joe, our programmer, and said, hey, we need a, a radar of some kind so that if we tell somebody this, that so-and-so coin is a buy on this month, we have a monthly newsletter where we do a recap and then we do a monthly coin pick. And our coin pick was up, it was ruined. It was up 157% in November to December. So we were pounding the table, guys, get in this, it's going higher. And then what happened? The whole market sold off. So the reason I'm telling you this is if you have this radar on, that's for you to say, don't wait for us to say, because we don't, we can't be giving you sell signals all the time. That's for you to say, uh-oh, radar's all red. I think I'm gonna get out, take some money out of this trade. I'm gonna not be fully long. Similarly, if it's all green, great time to be going long. And again, we're increasing probability of your trade becoming successful. Now, in all fairness, I'm going to do something. I want to note to you that these are all customizable, these indicators. So I'm in the settings. Uh, the default here is a four hour daily, uh, weekly, and then monthly. So I'm curious to see what this shows. And so we are all red on our radar, everybody. So um, be careful. I, I mean, this is a signal to me that uh, two things. We'll go to Bitcoin in a minute, but this the, the narrative here is, look, we're in a, the dynamic uh, ATR has us in an entry zone. We are going higher, but um, it, it's uh, it's likely going to pull back first. Okay, that's that's what I'm seeing. And if we zoom out on all this, and hopefully this is helpful for you guys, by the way, if it is, uh, let me know in the chat. I'd like to like to know this. So on a monthly time frame, just zoom in out. When in doubt, zoom out. If you only have the dynamic average true range, well, it went exit back here, kind of went sideways. You you missed the earlier entry, but it went still went bullish back here, caught that bull run exactly, and then it flipped exit right there, down down bled bled bled, and then. You know, you're not catching the the total bottom, although our early reversal indicator was showing that. But uh, if all you had was this uh, ATR, it went entry point right here, boom, 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 exit, bear market, down, 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 waited till it got back up, re-entry, went down for a bit, but then it went up high and didn't flip bearish, flipped bearish a little bit late. That's why we have our early reversal indicator. We're mostly looking for entry points. We are at the early part of this bull market, okay? But as we've seen, this can pull back for a little bit and still be, so long-term, we're good. But I think we pull back to 60K, maybe 50K. Uh, ATR is kind of our guiding light on that. I'm going to look at some other indicators too. Um, in terms of, let me just turn these off so you guys can focus on what I want to show you originally. And we'll look at some cool things here. Again, on a monthly time frame, And um, so what we have here is our trend strength indicator, which is turning over. And I we don't want to see that. If it breaks below 80, typically we see it all, cycle all the way down here to the lower edge and then bounce higher. Now, the next point where it becomes oversold and bounces is going to be a great time to get in on the monthly time frame. And again, we, we saw that back in January of 2023. Now, more than likely, we are, you know, we're going to see something like this, okay, from the 2016-27 high uh, and just looking left 20, you know, we're, it's worth noting, you guys, that we're fairly advanced in this trend strength indicator. And the last cycle, when it started to turn over, that was April and then May. And then we know what happened in June, July. We had a big sell off, right? And midsummer, and then we bounced. So could we see that same thing happen here? Uh, I have seen some correlations. Look at this, you guys. 
I mean, I don't like to draw too many lines in the sand, but I'll leave that there. So let's say we pull back for a month or two, and then we hit that bounce point here and go higher. I'll leave that on there, but uh, it's certainly interesting and uh, telling that we're, we're very overbought on uh, on this market. Okay, let's go back. Stay with me here. We're, we're basically, we're like Sherlock Holmes making a case here for what happened before it happened. So the RSI Pro, again, look at this on the monthly time frame. only have seen this on a monthly time frame a couple of times. We have been seeing bearish divergence also all the way along here. So this, I, I, this is uh, obvious to me. We're pulling back in. I, I don't think we go back. We go higher just yet. So back here in 2013, we saw this red circle and uh, we saw a second one in 2013. That was that double cycle peak, remember? Bull mark, bull peak, came back, bull peak. Uh, it hit it exactly, red circle here, January of 18 at the peak. Where did this happen here? April of 2021, that was before the summer sell-off. Didn't quite get the uh, 2021 peak like we know, but still we have other indicators that did that. So right now, and we've seen this red line going lower has a bearish divergence. It's more prominent on the weekly time frame. And, um, you know, we're getting a little bit deep in all this. And you might be bewildered, but, um, you know, you can see we also have bullish divergences on weekly timeframes. So right now, there is no divergences. These uh, red lines going down, it indicates bearish divergence. So it started to show that as early as January of 2021. Okay, so that was kind of a clue that the markets were coming down. I'm happy to say we don't have bearish divergence yet on the weekly, but we are a bit overbought. And we'll look at the average, the regular RSI in a minute. And, and I'm sorry if this is uh, this is new to you and it maybe looks hard to learn. It's not hard to learn. And uh, you guys can pick it up. Down here, bullish divergence. See that red line? This is hidden bullish divergence. All you need to look for are green circles and red circles. September of 2023, Amazing time to have bought into Bitcoin, right? And we were in October. We started seeing that going higher. So right now, I don't see divergences there on that weekly time frame. Um, stay with me though, because we're going to talk about something on the two-week time frame that's a little bit concerning too. Uh, and um, but I want to go through this. So we have um, Bitcoin on the, the money flow. On money flow also turning down on the monthly time frame. So this is a bit delayed, probably coming down in this range. So I, another sign that I think we go lower here before we go higher. And then uh, let me open this up here. This is an RSI as well. So on a, a weekly time frame, I got to click it just right to open it up. Yeah. So on the standard RSI, really all it tells you, it doesn't give you the same, nowhere near the same information as our RSI Pro. And uh, again, you can find those uh, indicators here at uh, moonstream.io slash mastery pro. It includes, uh, I'll show you what it includes in a minute. We don't even have like a, uh, that on here um, as a sales page. But um, there's 30 day guarantee and a lifetime uh, price on that is, is uh, well worth it. So uh, on this RSI heading downward, isn't that interesting? So um, it's uh, heading in a downward fashion. So on this monthly time frame, in the weekly time frame, you know, we've been watching this as well. And when it gets up into these frothy levels, usually when we do see a pullback here. So uh, no surprise, no surprise that we're pulling back on that RSI relative strength index. You know, it's almost too much, but they're, you know, it, it's like a kid in the candy store when you understand how these work and what they are starting to show us. And they're all pointing toward lower in April. I'll just show you one more. The MACD is where I, what I use partially to call the last market cycle high. And uh, there are other things like um, Pi Cycle Top, but really we're looking at our own indicators. But when you see what happens when this starts getting really high over above the blue line over these green lines, so, you know that's kind of where things start topping out. We're not there yet on the monthly. So this is a short-term pullback and we'll get there. All right, um, let me see, any questions on this? And David says, I have the new pro indicators after having the regular ones for a couple of years, really like them, still learning the new ones too. Uh, great. Um, yeah, thanks, David. And uh, certainly they've been a big help. Let me turn off the um, uh, ATR. Uh, let's see, I had it on there twice somehow. Um, let's get back to the news, you guys, and then we'll look at some other things like movers, you know, what's moving in crypto. Uh, we've got some just to skim through that. I don't see anything, you know, I would not be buying anything today in this big red sell-off here. Uh, I mean, Bitcoin's barely down now. It was down quite a bit more. If we turn that off, 
Uh, Solana, Solana is down 3%, BNB 3%, and Sheeb up a little bit. We've got Avalanche, Bitcoin Cash down quite a bit. And just just not a, not a bullish day, everybody. Let's see. Um, we could talk about this a little bit. What, how are we doing on time? We've got hour and a half in. We kind of kind of wrap things up here. Expect the unexpected. Uh, let's see. Let me skim this for us. Weekly charts, recent approval, shifts from volatile moves in Bitcoin Global. Uh, you know what? I don't think this is going to be helpful for us right now. I would like to. Um, well, let's see. This is the article with Novogratz. I knew there was one, and he's a smart guy. Want to hear what Mike has to say? So he's talking about something a debt, impending debt death spiral. Before we unpack that, what would that mean? It, it, you know, one of the 10 factors of going to 100,000, 150,000 Bitcoin for us is, you know, the global, um, debt crisis and what happens is there a flight to quality as larry fink was talking about and you know flight to quality being bitcoin and um so if there is an impending debt death spiral and people are uh, terrified of holding fiat where do they go well peter schiff would have you buy gold um you know raul paul would have you buy bitcoin who's right um probably a little bit of both although i don't hold gold um you know it's hard to get in and out of and and um so big, it leaves us with Bitcoin. So I think, let's see what he says. That's just my off the top of the head, what he's going to say. Uh, okay, no regrets. He's US debt blowout. Now, incidentally, there was something else I was watching too, um, where they, I think it was Bloomberg, ran a number of studies, like 20 or 30 or more studies uh, and case, you know, scenarios of, can we dig our way out of this debt bubble? And in none of the studies does did it work. Something's got to change, and this is a, this is an issue. Uh, how does it how does it affect crypto? That's really what we need to be comfortable with. And I'm sure many of you are are up on top of this and have an opinion. But uh, yeah, Mike Novogratz, uh, we were trying to get him for our Future of Crypto Summit. We're going to do that again. I, I, I'm going to get Mike on. He 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 wanted to do it. He just had a scheduling conflict. Stark warning about the current United States debt situation. Arguing, uh, using the government immediately to cut spending. Well, clearly the current regime is not doing that. They they're trying to push a seven trillion dollar uh, debt spending uh, package. Um, I don't know. I don't know. There's no really good solution. Uh, we won't get into politics, everybody. I'm just shaking my head over here. Um, my debt to GBT ratio, approximately 125%. Um, not good. No bueno. Um, historically perceived significant economic challenges. What, what scares me, everybody, is that all of us are thinking the same thing and we need to make this bull run count. What if it doesn't? Be careful, please be careful. Uh, don't don't call don't be all in on this and or the gambling mentality and hoping. Hopium is dangerous. I'd be very I'd have some I'd have some cash uh, just in case um, to buy the dip or or you know tether or whatever. So proposed solutions. Let's see. Uh, historical precedence. Uh, Novogratz points out the last 34 countries to reach such levels of indebtedness were 33 were forced to restructure their debt. Guys, if we come out and say, sorry, everybody, uh, we're defaulting. Uh, dollar loses its, uh, you know, will lose as uh, world reserve currency. Uh, I mean, maybe that drives everything to Bitcoin. I'm assuming that's where Mike is going with this. But um you know, we just can't we can't dig our way out of this spending more and more and um and, and shipping all our money overseas and 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 conflicts and various things and uh y you know uh just uh I don't know uh, different class, different conversation. Let's talk about critical need to government to drastically cut measures to curb spending and uh, belts uh measuring expenditures, the death the de death spiral. Yeah, I mean we're kind of in one. All right, what is he? Let's just get to the TLDR. 
uh, profiles to evaluation and alternatives. To strong, okay, yeah, in such a scenario, here it is. So financial experts speculate it left unchecked debt profiles may soar and currency devaluation might be the alternative. We've been talking about that uh, for a while now, devaluing the US fiat currency, losing as a world currency. You know, the BRICS nations are still pushing toward and, um, you know, away from the dollar. And it's looking like toward a Bitcoin backed currency, last I heard, or was it was it gold backed? Um, it's I haven't kept up on that. That is still a smoldering campfire. Less demand for dollars equals more supply, more supply, less demand, more inflation, uh, and around and around. She goes where she stops, nobody knows. Such a scenario, storing assets in Bitcoin is a guaranteed way of not suffering the attendant losses uh, that will follow. And, um, you know, this, this is a safe haven, but so anyway, uh, Bitcoin, uh, Novograd's bullish on Bitcoin price trajectory. And, um, you know, it is scheduled. The halving is coming up, you guys. It's a couple days away. Uh, you know, some people saying the 19th, some people saying the 20th. I don't see, I don't see it in the charts. New information equals new decision, but I think I think April really needs to sell down. Everyone's expecting it to go higher, and so we're going to see more liquidations of these leveraged longs and the Uber drivers saying, "How can I buy Bitcoin?" And someone you know powers the be. We're seeing there, there there's there's not the buying pressure that we need to push that higher right now. I think it's I think the buying pressure kicks off early May. So the question is, how low do we go before that? Uh, however, however, here's the bottom line. No matter what, I won't be um, tied to a date. We'll be watching our indicators when we start to get, you guessed it, the signals starting to align. That's why you need to have these to have an edge in these markets. When we start to see the ERI, now the reason this is powerful is, and I, maybe I will show you guys, and some of you have seen this, but the ERI, the early reversal indicator, hence the name, shows a specific velocity of buying that is not caused by retail trading. It's it's a it's a pattern within three time periods. Okay, and it works in all time frames. It works in all in three time periods from one point to another. Okay, above 20 is the bullish signal. And similarly on the bearish side, uh three time periods from a certain point below 80 and then there's a Keltner channel built in there and some other quant stuff. I, I couldn't tell you how it works. I'm not the programmer, but I, I've been, I'm, I'm, I, it's, we, we, we do rely on that. And the TSI, when those two align, um, it, that's, that's all I need. And, and I'll look at higher time frames. Uh, it's not always as clear. That's why we look at multiple time frames and use more of the indicators. But, uh, you know, look, if I'm wrong and it's not May and when April and starts to turn, um, great, but I think we we go lower from here. This is this is sell the rumor. We're selling into that 60k range at least, because that's where the buy orders are. Okay, Novogratz suggests the government should consider raising taxes. Well, he wouldn't never get elected to, <laughs> to office in select areas, given the already high tax burden. Oh, okay, in 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 selected areas. Okay. Uh, spending cuts, revenue generation, policymakers mitigate the risk of, um, yeah, I mean, this is all common sense. All right. Point is, what's he saying about Bitcoin? Resilience banking under strain, you know, and maybe we still see more bank failures. That has fallen off the radar. If we start seeing bank failures, which we thought would happen after the bank term funding program ended, but didn't, um, because one big bank was going to fail and then um, Ken Griffin came in and gave him a billion dollars. So, uh, you know, sort of quantitative easing by the billionaires. But we could see more bank failures if if um, the interest rates, let, let's say, God forbid, they raise interest rates again. We have some banks seriously underwater on their books, unrealized losses. Uh, so that could trigger um, a number of things. Uh, growing concerns about the resilience of the banking sector tends to come under strain. Term. Yeah, this is the uh, Novogratz warning comes amid growing concerns about the resilience of the banking sector, which tends to come under strain during periods of economic turbulence. That means grab the oh shit handles, everybody. You know, those handles in the car that that's when you take the turn too fast and you're saying, oh shit, hold on. That's that's what that means. Grab the oh shit handles. Uh, hold on for dear life. Uh, HLDL, 
Analysts also assert that to avert a potentially dire scenario, there must be decisive action from blah, 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 shore up. Anyway, do better government is what that means. I was hoping to see what he would say, essentially, uh, what this means for Bitcoin and why you should buy. But it uh, it does, let's see, just case re real, okay, well here, well, Kiyosaki steps in to take the thunder, saying basically uh, last year investors stick with real assets, gold, silver, Bitcoin, right? And, um, you know, he was right. Kiyosaki was right. You know, he, he's, he's not always right, but he was right. And um, Galaxy and Novogratz, heeded that advice it's interesting they're buying ethereum uh more than bitcoin and didn't mention that all right i don't know uh real quick you guys solana whales scoop up millions of dollars worth of meme coins as crypto markets dip uh look on chain um let's not really get into that but uh interesting i mean i could pull up uh, you know, let's not get into meme coins. Maybe tomorrow we'll talk about it in the M3 class. Bitcoin whales refuse to sell by Bitcoin price ditches. Well, somebody's selling. The derivative traders went from de-risking to clear pessimism, but large volume hodlers are in no hurry to bow to Bitcoin pressure. So, you know, the whales are holding on. Uh, you, you know, I'm not really sure. He, this is more retail traders are dumping and the uh, the weak hands, but I wouldn't think they could have pushed price that far down because the ETFs don't appear to be, let's see, eyeing a whale liquidity levels, monitoring platforms, whale map identified 52K and 48K as other key levels. Uh, I don't know that we get that low. And mm -hmm. if you believe Bitcoin will hold, now's the time to keep believing. Otherwise, we've got a bit of a shakeout ahead of us. Data, data from CoinGlass. Now, by the way, this is... Um, our order blocks are sort of loosely based on this. There are real-time versions, like this might be high block or um, one of the other ones, but you don't want to be watching this. But, but can you see this, you guys? So basically, without paying tons of money, uh, these are liquidation heat maps. Um, you know, that's the other side of it. Our buy orders are essentially the same. But what this means is, and this is why prices tend to go up and down a lot, the market makers are going for liquidity and to liquidate traders with big positions so the market makers get that inventory back to resell and short and do things like that okay so uh i'm not don't not going to show you all this make your eyes hurt all right guys we've unpacked a lot of that anything that's um i don't see anything uh pressing there we had that uh come up all right okay let's do this we talked about that um i do want to just come back and say uh, check out the cryptomastery.org to get the base indicators we talked about our eri and tsi you can see these right here when these line up you guys look how accurate they are here bottom up top down buy sell buy okay really simple and here's that dynamic average true range you can overlay it works great on four hour charts it's also uh, we usually use those in our um, classes tomorrow, and uh, that's a good forward indicator. So learn more about that, cryptomastery.org. And then from there, you can learn about the uh, pro indicators uh, as well. You can add that to your order. All right. Um, what do you want to do, you guys? Uh, let me get back through the comments. Taxes are a smokescreen of control, says Perry. And I almost called you Pirate J. I think Pirate J is, is with us. Pirate J. Pirate Chain, I saw, is on the roll. Let's talk about that tomorrow on some intel. Need the details. Uh, taxes are a smokescreen of control. The money system doesn't work the way most people think at all, especially not in the U.S. after the emergency banking out of 1933. Yeah, that is conversation for later, uh, Perry, but uh, thanks for mentioning that. And um, anything else you guys want to talk about? The width, uh, time duration of the order blocks extending to the right, indicative of anything. Um Good question, uh, you know, and I would imagine that, uh, you know, they don't last forever. What will happen is as those buy orders disappear, uh, they will no longer show here. So I'm glad that we can look back on them and see where they were and and maybe still are. But if you if you go to a weekly time frame, if you go to a weekly time frame, it can change. So what's interesting to me here on Phantom Coin. Uh, and I'm sorry, we didn't really look at any coins. Mostly we do that in M3 Active Trader. We go through our hot list uh, or buy list and uh, give you some actually actionable uh, advice. So uh, you can find out more that, about that at M3 Active, uh, M3, what is it? Moonstream.io slash M3. 
Okay. Um, not here to sell you things you don't need, you guys. You need this if you're trading in these markets. I'm just saying. And you can you can read what other traders are saying in here. Uh, lots of, there, there's so many reviews we don't even put them on there because we got a bit too busy, busy. All right. Um, what was I gonna do there? We were on Phantom Coin. We were in a weekly buy block. And um, what I'm gonna do now is look at our other indicators. However, we do not have an ERI. We do. We are heading down. The trend is down in the uh, weekly time frame. So I would not be buying anything here yet. Our ideal entries are lower edge of the ch the trend at channel. ERI or TSI coming up above 20. We had a nice early signal on that RSI. So let, let's jump off of uh, Phantom Coin and uh, look at Bitcoin here. It's it's not, it's corrected. It's holding a bit. There's a weekly buy zone here, by the way, around 62. So uh, that's kind of interesting, but I do not like this TSI rolling over like that. And on the daily time frame. Uh, not seeing too much. Here's what I wanted to do, and we'll sign off with this. We'll unpack this more in tomorrow's class. But uh, I want to get to the total market cap and the Bitcoin on a two-week time frame because I sent that out to you guys in the member chat. And now, normally, I don't use a two-week time frame, but I'm going to look at it here because... What we had in our signals on the one week when we got when we signaled to get out of the market top back here also shows on the two week. Okay. And I'll go to a one week real quick. Pay attention to this because this is concerning to me. Um, actually, I need to be able to change the times on a weekly time frame. We had, I'll turn off the rocket because we're not looking at bullish signals. Uh, there. In a weekly time frame, our I don't need the um, Bollinger Bands and I don't need the order blocks. Okay, right here, ERI, right at the cycle top on a weekly time frame, TSI, RSI. The other thing, my my red alert criteria are ERI, TSI red, RSI red, you know, and, and, and could substitute a bearish engulfing candle on the weekly. Because once you see it, you cannot see it. Where did we have bearish engulfings, candles? I don't why it won't let me do this here, uh, here, you know, um, and here, of course, I've circled that one. And so those are worth paying attention to. Now, what I'm not seeing right now is bearish engulfing on the weekly time frame, but it's, it's, it's technically called something a three inside down, which if you go to a two week is a bearish engulfing. And we can see that still applies over here. Big one here, but that would have gotten us out late. Look at that, though. Bearish engulfing on the two-week ERI. Uh, ERI triggered earlier on the weekly time frame. Okay, but that would have saved us is all of this bloodshed. And so what I want to be sure of, I don't care what anything else says. You know, um, we are seeing this on a two week uh, on the RSI, which also triggered back here on uh, a bearish engulfing candle. Now the ERI, you know, as is, is, let me pull it up. The real one, the underlying, the oscillator, which sometimes can signal early than the arrow. We're working on that. It's a glitch. So, so that has not happened, but it's about to, it's possible. So essentially one time period, two time period, and, and by the close of Sunday, if we have an ERI on a two week time frame, uh, I'm going to be saying I get out and uh, or, or at least half. The difference is we're in a bull market. This was the, the top. I get it. This is not easy stuff, you guys. And the, the total market cap showing very similar signs, though. You see this? ERI, ERI. Bearish engulfing, bearish engulfing, bearish engulfing. And here we do see the TSI on, see this red line? This is the actual indicator, but I don't want your, you to have to decipher this. I can read this. Uh, most people can't. That's why we have it show up as an arrow, right? So this vertical line here, arrow, uh, red arrow, red arrow, um, red arrow. The vertical lines show down below. So we're not looking at this. We're not looking at this. We're just looking at these two. And this is the actual pattern that we noticed. So 
um, you know, the arrow has it shown, but it's showing here, bearish engulfing. So if we get a TSI below, I, I'm going to be saying, guys, we could go down to one and a half trillion on this the mar the market, total market cap. I don't want to sound the alarm bells prematurely. Um, you know, join us tomorrow in M3 Active Trader for more intel on that. I just wanted to throw it out there, and uh, we'll unpack that as we always do a little bit deeper. So, um, any guys, anyway, guys, any uh, questions here? Uh, Perry says the bright lime green and dark red blocks. Um, I think I know what you're talking about. Is the width time duration of the order blocks extending to the right? It's not. It's not indicative of anything. No. Uh, no, Perry. Um, now. If you are referring to, let me make sure I'm answering your question. Uh, if you're referring to the bright lime green, these, these were actual buy orders. So that's money flow that happened. And the width is pretty much standard on these. They're kind of like, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It almost looks like seven or eight bars into the future. Uh, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six. I thought, you know, I'll find out for you. I'll have, I'll have to find out. I don't know. That's a good observation. Um, the difference though, is those are actual buy orders, money flow that's come in already. And the difference is by the order block detector, that's where buy and sell orders are placed. And it doesn't mean that that anything will happen. If the prices come down in these ranges, then the buyer's orders will get filled ostensibly and we should go higher. That's why I'm saying 60K is a likely bounce point. Now we could still, but here's the thing. Um, and, and tomorrow's class, we'll talk about where I think it could bounce to as a potential profit taking level since we are in a downtrending channel now. So everybody, uh, that's all we have time for. Um, you know, the the red boxes, if you had a question about that, uh, let me see if I have any, you know, where are we? Those are the overhead. So buy, these are where the sell order is in. You know, I was planning to sell uh, Ethereum up here on 4,500. Previously, there were sell orders up at 5K, so they've moved. Um, and uh, But we didn't even quite get there. So again, these are sell orders. We've got he heavy healthy sell orders here. And I have that already as an alert, ETH crossing 4,500 take profits. And I will be because that's a big sell zone. If we get back down here, which I don't think we do, um, let's go to a daily. Um, buy pressure on a daily is 2,600. And, but is worth noting you guys, we're in a downtrending channel now. We can't avoid that. Uh, this, this is very, this is not likely to suddenly turn around. Um, it's, we would need to see kind of a basing pattern and a higher low and usually a retest. So I think it's worth, uh, you know, being, being someone in cash. Okay, everybody. Thanks you guys. Uh, thank you, Mary. And thanks, David. Thanks for showing up. And, um, if you like this, if you're watching YouTube replay, uh, please like, subscribe, share it with somebody, comment below, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll do more of these if you like uh, the content. All right. See you guys.